Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I'm Taylor, if you guys don't know who I am. And thank you guys so much for stopping by. So if you guys can tell, I do have a new setup and I'm really loving it. Um, I finally got a new backdrop or a backdrop stand or whatever. So everything looks more like so much more better. And I'm actually sitting in front of a better light um, that's more natural and everything. So I hope you guys like this video. If you guys have already seen the title of this video, I will be talking to you guys about uh, pros and cons about being a small YouTuber. Because I am a small YouTuber. If you guys go to my channel, I have almost 300 followers. Three, 250, 300 followers or subscribers on my channel. Which is amazing, but posting so many videos that I have and basically reviewing all these products has gotten me these view, these subscribers and be honest. So, if you guys just want to basically hear my input about what I like about being a small YouTuber and what I don't like be about being a small YouTuber, then keep on watching. Let's go! I have a couple pros and cons, and I would say one of the first, there's a lot of cons about being a small YouTuber, but that's just because you have to build up your own channel yourself. Um, a pro is... I wouldn't really say this is a pro, but um, always just be yourself because you will see in some videos that you think you look stupid or you think you look silly. You're like, oh my gosh, that's never me. Why did I do that? But that is you. If you're not being honest with yourself, your videos aren't going to be fun. They're going to be boring. They're just going to be like every other video out there. So I would say a pro about being a small YouTuber or just being a YouTuber in general is you basically get to... Um, Put out your your own personality. Tell the world who you are. And you don't really have to change yourself, which is nice. And you're going to do what you love anyways. And that's another um, pro about being a YouTuber all in general. Is you get to pro you get to basically produce content that you love. I mean, if you're sitting down filming a video. If you're sitting down filming a eating video. Or you're sitting down and filming a makeup video. And say... You don't like makeup, but you're still filming makeup videos, then why are you doing it? Like, stop right there. Don't continue to keep uploading makeup uh, just because, ooh, you're into makeup. So you think if I start a makeup channel, I can get all this free makeup and then I'll be good, you know? Don't think of yourself like that. Think of yourself as if you want to be a YouTuber, think about what you love. And another thing is, if you're doing a topic that you don't really love, some viewers will be able to see that you don't have as much passion in that topic as someone else. So they won't watch you. They're going to go watch someone else. So always just make, an, so always just make note that if you want to be a YouTuber, you always have to produce honest content. Always be true to yourself and to your viewers. That's why they're watching. They clicked on your um, video for a reason. So be honest. Tell them the truth. Don't lie about anything. And two... Relook at what you're uploading. If you don't like makeup, then stop uploading makeup videos. If you like playing video games, start uploading video games instead. Just do something you have more of a passion in. Like, for instance, I love makeup. Like, I love makeup. I can talk about it, sit down, anything. So that's why I have a makeup channel. Kind of makes sense, right? So the reason why I have this makeup channel is because I love sitting down talking with talking to any of you guys about makeup. And makeup just makes me happy in general. I can just sit down and relax myself. It basically relaxes me. It doesn't stress me out anything. But I also do like cooking too. So just because I like cooking too doesn't mean, oh, maybe I should start doing YouTube videos on cooking. Because I'm not really passionate about cooking. I like cooking, but I'm not passionate about it. So you see the difference? Do something you love and that you can talk about it for hours on end. And if somebody asks, somebody asks you about like this topic, you can just sit down to, with them and you can just tell them everything about it. But if for cooking for me instantly, like I can't sit down with someone and be like, okay, so... I know how to do this. I know how to do that. Like, I know how to cook. I'm, I'm a good cook. I would say so myself. But I'm not that good of a cook. Like, I know how to make recipes off scratch everything. You know what I mean? So, that's just another um, big giant thing I go with about YouTube. So, so 
Sorry if it sounds like I'm rambling, but I'm just trying to get the point across. Another, I would say a con thing about what YouTube does for small YouTubers is, I mean, I would say this is a good thing, but I've heard that in order to be viewed as like popping up on someone else's news feed or not news feed, but like YouTube homepage, I would say, in order to be on that, you have to basically upload constantly. So you have to upload like every other day, three days a week, two days a week. As long as you're uploading at least two videos a week, you're going to start popping up on other people's YouTube channels. And that's what you want. If you say, hey, I want to start a YouTube channel, but I'm only going to sit down and film one or two videos every month, but my channel is going to grow and I'm going to have a million views by or a million subscribers in the next two years, that's not going to happen because you're literally only going to be putting out, say you do one video a month, that's 24 videos you're putting out. That's not a lot. For me, the reason why like I'm starting to get more views on my videos is because I'm uploading three days a week. I, so I upload at a certain time and a certain day. So when people get on YouTube, I would, I would upload Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So some people would be like, oh, it's Monday. Taylor's video is going up at noon. I can't wait to watch it. They're expecting that video. They know I'm going to be uploading, so they're expecting it. So that gives you um, more views because more people are going to want to come back because they're like, I know when this person uploads a new content, so I'm going to stay up with them. So that's always a good and a bad thing about YouTube as well. Another bad and, um, thing about YouTube is it's if you're a small YouTuber like me, it's so hard to get noticed, but that's just because you have to put time and effort into what you do. You can't just record it, sit down, record a video, maybe take, say the video is an hour long, take 20 minutes out of that, edit the video, which is, if you have an hour video, it should take you at least two hours to edit because you're going back and forth, replaying, adding all this content into the video. Um, um, so it does take me a little bit longer or less or longer to upload or edit my videos, but that's just because I'm actually watching them. I'm making sure I want things in the video. I'm replaying it. I'm fast forwarding. I'm doing everything just to make sure the video is up to the standards I want which is what you want. And then when it comes to editing, when you actually upload the video on YouTube, great. But don't automatically be like, okay, I edited my video. Like, great, I edited my video, now I'm gonna just upload it on YouTube and now I'm gonna get those views. It doesn't work like that. You have to add a description, you have to, and a description is the most important part, I would say, because when people People are looking on YouTube, uh, if they look up a certain item, so say I filmed a drugstore video and I use a Maybelline foundation. If in my description I put Maybelline foundation, hey kitty, in my video I put Maybelline foundation and then whatever kind of foundation it is, I put that in my bio or my description. But like what I was saying, so if I put one of those things in my video and I say that I use the Maybelline's foundation, when someone goes on YouTube and they're trying to find a best drugstore foundation and they know Maybelline is a brand that sponsors drugstore makeup, they search in Maybelline, automatically it's going to go through everybody's description and if you have the word Maybelline in it, it's going to put you into the like results page so your video is going to pop up so say i do a video and i use the morphe 3 3502 palette that i've used and that video got so many views um so say i talk about it and i sit down and i talk about it and the description box i would be basically saying do i like it yes or no what kind of video is this going to be? Is this going to be a review video? Is this going to be me just swatching and talking about it? Is this going to be a first impressions video? Is this just going to be a basic tutorial? Is this going to be a Halloween tutorial? So if you get, you get the point, you have to 
address what kind of video it is. So if you guys read my description box, every time I put, I put like, hey guys, thank you guys so much for watching my video. Um, today I decided to use the 35, the Morphe 3502 palette. And I love this palette. It is perfect for an everyday fall look. So if you guys want to see how I got this fall look right here, then keep on watching. And basically, and then, or that could be your intro too. You always want a catchy intro too, and I'll get to that. But this is just going to catch your eye and basically be like, okay, well this, and a bonus. A nice thing about a description box is say someone does just an eye look, but they don't tell you what they're wearing for eyebrows or, or like a product for their eyebrows, what kind of highlight they're wearing, etc. You know what I mean? Um, most YouTubers or beauty bloggers, whoever they are, they're going to put what they're wearing on their face in the description box which is so helpful. So the description box is basically like a key where it's like they use all these. So you don't have to go through the video again and basically say, okay, what was that primer they used? They really liked it and I want it too. Now I have to go watch the video. Just click that description box and more than likely they will have what they used in the description box. So always use the description box. It's so helpful. Same with tags. Tags are basically the exact same thing about description boxes. So in tags, I would always put your username, name, whatever you have. Uh, so for me, I always put in the description box Taylor F. Glass just because that's my username or Taylor Glass. And when I put that in there, when people search my name, my videos are going to pop up because they search something that was related to my video you get what i mean so put like movie like not movie but like put what you edited with put um what kind of camera you use what kind of palette you use everything it's basically the tools are going to be or the tags are going to be your main tags are going to be one of your search basically a search engine whatever you would search for this video put them in the tags that's basically what I'm going to say about that. Um, another good another good thing, or I wouldn't say good thing, but another thing about YouTube, and it's kind of a negative for small YouTubers. This is kind of like a video. This video actually, it's not really about the small YouTubers' pros and cons. It's basically about YouTubers in general. Um, advice starting out for a YouTuber. Uh, but another thing about being a small YouTuber is, like I said earlier, it's so hard to get noticed. Like, I could be producing, I could be uploading a video every single day to my channel. And say I upload 30 videos in one month. 30 videos for each day of the month. And I'm like, okay, awesome. I'm going to upload 30 videos. I should get about, say, two or three subscribers. And if I get about two or three. 30 subscribers, I said get around 60 to 90, around 100 um, subscribers. And this month, awesome, I'm going to do great. That's not how it works. Uploading a video, like I said earlier, you have to make your thumbnail catchy. Thumbnail is a huge part of it. Make sure your thumbnail is going to be attractive. If I see your thumbnail and say, I see... A thumbnail and it has cats dogs and it has like all these different things and it's like a cat and dog race or whatever and it's very like animated brings me in I'm gonna want to watch that or say for a makeup video I put the products on the bio or the thumbnail so say I take a thumbnail right now like and then I start adding products like foundation and then concealer bronzer and i start adding all these different products everywhere so I say i start adding all these products so like everything on my face will be represented on the screen so when i'm looking for a thumbnail and i see oh this person used that bronzer i've been really wanting to try that bronzer i will click on that video and i will try to see what their opinion and basically if they like that bronzer or not so that's another thing about thumbnails is Make them appealing. Does that thumbnail, would that thumbnail make you click on it? Would it make your sister click on it? If you don't know about if your thumbnail is good, go ask somebody. Go ask your mom. Go ask your dad. Just be like, hey, 
Did you watch this video if this had this thumbnail? Or even just show them the title and the thumbnail. Would you watch this video? Don't give them any more questions. Don't say anything. Just ask them. Simple yes or no. And if they say no, ask them why. And if they say the title sounds boring, the thumbnail doesn't look good, or the picture doesn't look good, it kind of doesn't look interesting to me, or I'm just not into that topic. If they're not into that topic, don't worry about it. But if they're into that topic, they want to learn more about it, but they just don't find it interesting, they don't find your video interesting, then change it up. That's a huge thing. Just change it. Like, there's no point in keeping it. Another thing that I keep mentioning, that I keep trying to mention, but I keep, like, forgetting about it. A huge thing about me being a makeup YouTuber or a beauty blogger. I basically vlog and I blog. Vlog, blog. So what I do is I'm a beauty blogger, so that means I upload videos about makeup every day. Vlogging is where if I go on to an adventure, like when I go to Chicago, I'm going to Chicago in a couple of weeks, but I'm going to Chicago in two weeks and I'm going to be filming my whole adventure, like my days, everything. And I'm going to take you guys along with. So it's basically taking someone al like along through your adventure. So when I go to Florida, same thing. I'm going to be uploading a vlog. And that's what those are. Um, but anyways, just say I have a YouTube channel and I'm a beauty blogger. And I want to sit down and I want to like review foundations. I can't just go out personally. I could. I could if I wanted personally. I could go out and say, I want to review all the new foundations that just came out. So, for example, when I'll be uploading this, Marc Jacobs just came out with a new foundation. Maybelline just came out with a new foundation. A couple other brands have came out with a new foundation. But for me, I can't just be like, okay, let's go spend $46 on a foundation. Let's go send... Spend 15, let's go spend 10. I can't just keep spending money out of my pocket. Because one, I have to spend money on different backgrounds. I have to spend money on good lighting, my camera, um, different things in order to get the video the way it is now with all this perfect lighting, no glare, nothing, and no shadows. But the downfall is about that. I can't, like I said, I can't just go spend my money. And so a lot of Makeup brands like, for example, Tarte, Too Faced, Marks Jacobs, and all these, Pure Cosmetics, ColourPop, they only send PR packages. And if you guys don't know what PR packages are, PR packages are basically a, every time a brand comes out with a new product, they send it to a beauty blogger and it's called a PR package. They don't have to pay for it, nothing. And they basically get to test it out, advertise it, review it, do whatever. And when they're advertising it, it's giving the brand kind of like an advertisement ad. So if a beauty blogger um, talks about it, someone may go buy it. And it's like an ad. You get that? And so a lot of brands only send beauty bloggers that have a lot of subscribers. A lot of people following their channel, they will only send that. Oh, you're so cute. Um, will only send them products because they know they have the views. They're going to get, they mention one product. They mention about a March Jacobs Foundation. If I mention about it, do you really think anybody from my video is going to go buy that foundation? Maybe two or three people out of that whole video is going to buy it if I do that. So that's $46 for them. Not really invested because they... I didn't pay for that foundation. They gave it to me for free. So they're basically not getting a profit for that. So if I mention, if I'm a high beauty blogger or whatever, and I mention that product and I say I have 2 million subscribers, there's going to be at least 100 to 200 people buying that product. And they're going to be making profit. So that's why higher beauty bloggers, if you have more subscribers, more content, all that, they're gonna get more PR packages. So that's a, that's kind of a pro, uh, con. So that's a con about being a small YouTuber is you have to deal with that. But, I mean, it's life. So I know this video was all over the place about being a YouTuber and all that, but I just wanted to sit down with you guys and I just wanted to film a quick video telling you guys 
what I like and not like about being a YouTube a small YouTuber and basically telling you guys if you are a small YouTuber how you can grow your channel so I gave you some tips if you guys like this video and you guys want me to do another video kind of like this or just doing a question and answer video or doing something else like that let me know down in the comments below if you guys like this video and you guys want to see more videos like this but also don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you guys want to help me out and um, build my channel I do upload also I do upload three times a week like I was saying I upload Monday Wednesday and Friday at 12 p.m. I think I'm gonna change that to at least 2 p.m. but I'm not for sure um, Sorry, I haven't been uploading recently. I've been really busy with school and finals and mid, or not finals, but midterms and all of that. So other than that, I'm just going to stop rambling and I'm just going to end this video. But thank you guys so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I love you guys so much and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys!